Distracted driving is anything that distracts you from operating the vehicle. Um, it can be uh, anything as simple as uh, reading a billboard sign, talking on your cell phone, um, anything that either takes your mind, your, your vision, or your hands away from operating the vehicle. As I was approaching Stone Castle Road on Route 52, I noticed a car coming in the uh, opposite direction. And I looked over to Stone Castle Road, everything seemed fine. And then when I looked back on the main road, kind of glanced back, I noticed this fella, this, this car had drifted out toward me. Then it drifted back, and then it drifted out once again. And by that time, there was no time for me to correct, and uh, we hit head on. During the accident scene, I, I was conscious for the entire episode right up till I went to the hospital. And, you know, while I was lying there, the first thing, in, you know, that came to mind was, wow, I just got hit by a car on my motorcycle. And, you know, many times, obviously, since then, I've said to myself, why me? And, you know, I've done the math a million times and really can't come up with an, an answer for it. Um, you know, other than simply it was negligence on someone else's part. Uh, due to distraction. If it happened because of bad weather or, or you know, something that was out of their control, um, maybe it would be a little easier to deal with. But I think, you know, sending a text or talking on your phone or doing something that you didn't have to be doing, um, other than, you know, operating the vehicle, um, I, I think uh, is, is hard, a little harder to deal with. Knowing that there, there was something that was within the operator's control that can also affect the victim's family, knowing that their loved one was taken from them. So birthdays, holidays, you know, they even have an anniversary for their death sometimes. I've been a grandfather for five years, and, you know, I have a five-year-old grandson and two two-year-old grandsons. And my youngest son is 20 and he's in college. And, you know, I was a young, I just turned 50 and I've been a young 50 and I was looking forward to a lot of good times in his 20s and, and my 50s yet, along with my older daughters and my grandsons. And, you know, then there's the other challenges that I face every morning, waking up and having to, you know, put my prosthetics on and uh, put myself together before I can go out and face the day. And the challenges all along that were you know, getting to uh, go to the prosthetics and the pain of going through being fitted and, you know, cast and, you know, it's a constant due process. The first person that actually ran up to me was the young man that hit me and he was very upset and as he got closer to me and realized that what had ex actually happened to me because I lost my leg and my arm at the scene. From what I understand, they located my arm some 50 feet from me. After I was hit, I cartwheeled sideways approximately 70 feet through the air before I landed. And when I looked down, my leg was next to me but detached. And uh, he was very upset and I knew that I didn't have much time because I'd be bleeding out and losing pressure. And I told him to immediately run over to the road and call 911 or flag other people down. 
this nurse, Janie, ran back to her car and uh, retrieved a shoelace from a sneaker and a uh, waistband lace from a pair of sweatpants. She returned to me, tied off my leg and tied off my arm with both of these, uh, you know, laces and basically saved my life because I was down to my last breaths. I would definitely have not made the ambulance. Uh, even after I made it to the hospital, I wasn't expected to live. And at one point on the helicopter, one of the medics actually said, we're losing him because my vitals, I guess, possibly dipped. And I just remember looking at him and thinking like, you're not losing me, I'm not going anywhere. As far as the future goes towards this, the distracted driver, everybody's going to have cell phones, everybody's going to have laptops accessible. Distracted driver, whether it's family members in your car, animals in your car, you just have to be responsible while you're operating the motor vehicle to have 100% of your car and every, everything that's going on inside of it. Whether it's a screaming kid, a dog that's loose in your car, because you don't have it properly restrained. It's on the, it's on the driver to, to make sure that, that they limit any distractions if you're operating a, a motor vehicle. It's affected me personally very much because I'm a self-made person. Everything I've done in my life, um, I've done on my own. And now it's simple things decorating this year outside my house to try to stay upbeat in life. The fact that I can't use a zip tie anymore, even, to tie a, a string to a piece of wood or something, a you know, string of lights or something just to hold them in place. Something as simple as that, you know, um, is very, you know, disturbing to me. As troopers uh, with the New York State Police and, and law enforcement officials, we would just like to remind everybody that uh, just to think twice before you pick up that, that handheld device or, or you pick up that newspaper or you go to put your makeup on or maybe even shave, we've seen people do that, um, just to think twice before, you know, before you do these, these things while you're operating a, an automobile. When that cell phone rings or that text goes off that uh, you think twice about picking that up and retrieving that call until you either pull over or you know, you're at a point of destination uh, because I've been a victim of possible cell phone distraction and uh, it's compromised my life greatly and it's not an easy thing. <laughs>